Hello and welcome to another one of our daily devotionals that go along with our sermon series, Easter Victory. Today we're in week two, day two, where we're looking at peace over anxiety. Every day we're looking at a different portion of scripture to see what it says about our theme. And as always, I encourage you to do something um, proactive, make it an alarm on your phone, set a mental cue, something just so that a number of times today you kind of stop, pause, reflect on our theme verse of the day and what it has to say, particularly today about peace. So we're doing something kind of uh, interesting today, and it explains the setting for this. I'm out here in my backyard because this is a place that gives me quite a bit of peace. I'm hanging out with a couple different people. Well, not people. Dogs that give me peace. Gus is here chasing his ball. Ziggy's chasing him. Uh, And I thought it'd be a good setting to talk about peace today. And we're going to approach it a little bit differently. We're going to look at a Uh, the book of Proverbs today uh, to discover what it has to say about peace. And Proverbs is an interesting book. It's one that a lot of times is either misunderstood or misused by Christians. Uh, To be quite honest, a lot of times people use it to um, tell other people what they should do. So they see something uh, that somebody is doing or or should be doing and they decide, well, let me find a verse of Bible that will make them do what they're supposed to do. And um, well, actually, if we're honest, um, Proverbs is pretty useful for that. Problem is that's not what it's intended for. Proverbs is actually written, and here particularly uh, Proverbs chapter 3 is uh, Solomon giving his advice to his son, and what he, the goal of Proverbs is to sort of let us, the reader, the hearer, um, gain a divine perspective of things. In other words, to look at the world through God's eyes, through his all-knowing and his all-powerful eyes, and from it then, uh, that perspective learn kind of how to live life, how life works. And so today we're going to start off in Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to look at the first two verses to kind of give us a a setup for understanding the next section. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. So right away here, we discover that what follows is in order to give us peace or add peace to our life. And Solomon here talks about following uh, his, but really he means God's uh, teachings and commandments. And there's a couple of interesting words there. The word for teachings there is Torah. That might be a word that you're familiar with. Um, it really means uh, God's word, right? His that. Uh, revealed truth that he has laid out for his people. It's the way the the world works. It's the way that we work as well. The second word is an interesting one. It's mitzvah. You might not be as familiar with it, but you may have heard it as part of um, Jewish rite of passage for young boys and girls, either bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah. Um, In order, that means either son of commandments or daughter of commandments. And so what it expresses is that those people have reached a point in life where they have been instructed in what God's will is and, and how to follow it. And much more than just um, sort of like keeping the rules or else, um, this is actually supposed to be heard as the way things work, right? This is just the natural order of things because God has organized it and directed it. So here we're going to jump ahead a few verses. We're going to look at a section now where Solomon talks about how following uh, the Torah and the mitzvah leads to wisdom. And wisdom is the path to true peace. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. So here we discover that wisdom is the path that leads us to see things from God's perspective, to have his, again, eternal and all-knowing perspective on things. And that is then to lend us the opportunity, the lens to see sort of why the world works the way it does, that it works according to God's order, that he is in control of all things. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold fast to her are called blessed. So this pursuit of her, which I'm calling godly wisdom, leads to pleasantness and peace, because at its heart, it trusts that God is in control and he knows what's best for his creation, but even for each and every one of us. Now, the really cool part that blows me away is the ending, um, where we're told that this peace leads us to experience almost as if we're holding on to the tree of life. Now, the tree of life is a 
discussion we could do a whole video series on our own but for our purposes really what Solomon is saying here is that when we experience God's peace it leads us back to a relationship that was like the relationship Adam and Eve had before the fall it's a reversible of things it returns us to that deep peace that comes from knowing that God is in charge and so my encouragement for you today is to uh, reflect upon that peace that God gives us that um, that true understanding and wisdom comes from his word which reveals to us his great care for us his his way that he's created this world to work but ultimately he's restored our relationship with him through the gift of his son Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead I pray that peace would be with you Alleluia he is risen